good morning all. It's uh, Friday morning. Waking up in uh, Stephen F. Austin State Park after a overnight camp trip. And it's a very foggy morning. I woke up uh, a couple times through the night. It got pretty chilly. It's down about uh, 46 right now, 45, 46 degrees. And moist, of course, because of the fog. Uh, so it's chilly. But what really woke me up is I had uh, a visitor. I don't know if it was a squirrel or a raccoon or what, but something came down the tree and uh, I had a bag of food, chips. They were sealed up, uh, but they were in a, a grocery bag hanging off of the carabiner here. And I felt something going, doing this to the hammock. <laughs> <laughs> something came for a nibble <laughs> and I, I shifted around and I heard it scurry off and run back up the tree and disappear so I'm guessing it was probably a squirrel so I got up a few minutes later came over here uh, just stood outside for a second and uh, all through here uh, I had my headlamp on and I'm just seeing little green dots everywhere there were about 15 or 20 uh, deer just out here in this grass back in the trees grazing looking at me wondering what I'm doing here this is their home anyway pretty nice uh, little camping spot it's not my preferred spot I talked about that yesterday I'll edit all this together so it'll be in the same video but uh, my preferred spot is over there where the green tent is it's just the particular arrangement of trees. Uh, it gives uh, a diamond formation, so it's perfect for hanging a hammock, and you can uh, tie off your tarp to it pretty well. But anyway, this worked out nicely. Temperature is pretty chilly overnight. I did okay, though. Uh, just thermals and slept in my clothes. No sleeping bag, no top sheet, nothing. I did okay. Cubs got a little uh, condensation and tree detritus on it. I armed the alarm last night. That's the first time I've ever used the uh, alarm on it. A nice little flashy blinky light there. Anyway, it's a nice peaceful place to be uh, through the week and in the off season but uh, during the busy weekends holidays peak season through the summer man this place is packed it's noisy too many people come out here with their stereos blazing and everything else they don't really want to camp and enjoy nature they want to party away from home anyway I'm going to start uh, straightening up my gear. I'm not going to put anything away until a little bit later this morning when the uh, fog burns off. I don't like putting things away wet. Uh, and it's all pretty wet right now. So we'll wait for that. And I'll do a little uh, ride home and put a few more miles on the Cub. All right, well, good Friday afternoon, everybody. I gotta keep moving in circles here. This campground is just infested with gnats and flies and mosquitoes and everything else. It's right at noon, and boy, they are flying in high fashion right now. Mm -hmm. You gotta take a breath in, and you suck in two or three gnats through your nose. Flies everywhere. Hey, hey, hey. I like the outdoors, but I could do without these little buggers. Anyway. I'm going to get on the road. I got a uh, text from the parts department over at the Honda shop, and they said my stuff has arrived. So they weren't specific, but I think that's the only thing I've got ordered out right now is that rack for this guy. So I'm going to head back into town and pick up the uh, rack. 
I don't know if I can, yeah, I won't be able to do it on the way in. I'm going to drop this stuff off. I don't know where to carry extra gear right now. So, oops, I guess I better put the microphone in. I'll start re recording here. Okay. Yeah, God, I stopped for one second and gnats are all over me again. All right, I should be uh, recording on the uh, helmet mic now instead of the external mic. Uh, I've got to find a trash can and get the flaming head out of this gnat infested playground. Uh, there's a can, but I'll just hit a different one on the way out. The weather's really nice again today. Uh, the wind is calm which is you know, nice for us, but it's also nice for the gnats. Nothing keeping them down. All this grass around here just uh, breeds them. Another minor thing about this uh, backpack, I noticed that it was kind of scuffing, I don't know that it was damaging, but it was leaving black marks all over the seat. And I'm not getting it on the fender, that's for sure. That'll scratch the finish. But the uh, there's like a black smudgy mark all over the uh, the back edge of the seat right on the uh, seam. So, I uh, won't be riding with the backpack on anymore if I choose to do that, it's going to be one that's much higher up that's not going to sit there and rest against the seat. If it has transferred color or something, I'll probably use uh, one of those Mr. Clean Magic Erasers or something like that and try to gently rub out the black. There's a big dumpster, but I'm going to stop at the one right up here at the front. I met some guys, uh, they're just ahead of me in the white truck, probably can't see it from here, they're just rounding that corner. Uh, one guy's from the uh, Hempstead area, another one's from the Dallas area, and they had the same urge yesterday just to get out and camp. So they grabbed their truck, grabbed a couple of hammocks, and away they went, <laughs> and we all ended up here. Uh, and they were asking if I had ever been to the... Uh, the hammock hang in, uh, I think it's Fairfield, uh, that's held by Dream Hammock or someone, uh, some one of those groups. I've always wanted to go to that, and I've never managed to uh, make it. So this year, I think uh, November time, I am going to do my best to attend that. I do like hanging. Trash, 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 trash. Where's the trash? Other side. Oh, there's blue bonnets. I took a picture with those yesterday. No, not those. The ones over here. I want a side stand. Have I mentioned that I want a side stand on this thing? I keep leaving it in first gear, thinking it's a scooter. I walk away, look back, and the rear wheel's just spinning away. Pack out the trash, never leave anything behind. Okie dokie. Uh, I stopped moving for a second and the gnats are already on me. goobered up my mirror hanging my helmet on there to get it away from the spiders and the ants. Uh, I looked at uh, my helmet a couple times just sitting on the picnic table while I was packing up the gear and I saw all kinds of creepy crawlies on it. Kept brushing them off and 10 more would be right there to take his place. Ow, that hurt. Just got a bug right in the eyeball. They are out in force today. Whew. 
so back to the mirror issue, I probably will put a, a helmet hook on here. I'll see. It depends on how it's going to hang. I don't want the helmet swinging around and banging into the uh, uh, front apron there, the, the leg shield. I don't want it to scuff up or scar up this paint anywhere. If I have a rear rack, then possibly I might put a top box on it, but I'd rather keep it kind of retro looking back there. And I don't want to do the milk crate. <laughs> <laughs> Although that is traditional Honda Cub. <laughs> no milk crates for me, man. I had that on my KLR 650. Milk crate with uh, your basic tools. And, uh, tarp. Bungee net. A few bungee cords. Bottled water. That was the uh, standard loadout for that container. And then whatever else I could fill in there. So I'm at a half a tank. I'm not quite sure if I can make it all the way back. We'll see. I'm not going to be doing 55 through here. I'll be going slower and trying to conserve some fuel. So we'll see how far the little cub gets. Uh, I've got 150 miles on the odometer now. So it'll be just right at 200 by the time I get home or 190 something odd. Okay, there's 63 miles on the trip right now, this tank. And we'll see how it goes. Now, the last time I filled up, which was the first fill, uh, it had 87 on the clock before uh, the first light started to flash. So... That meant that I had a quarter tank left. I should be able to get 120-ish out of it. So hopefully I've got enough to get all the way back. That would be 50 miles from now, 55. this backpack on my back and the handlebars as low as they are I'm pulling on the bars and I'm noticing the bike is <laughs> I'm pulling it all over the place it's not doing bad I'm doing bad to force myself to hunch forward because of the backpack I need to do that anyway keep the thing off of the seat Downs. good on the little rumple strip. I'm testing it here to see what it does. And the little narrow tires, I thought it might squirm a lot, but it doesn't bother it. You can feel it, but not bad, not bad. Honda made a pretty decent selection with these tires. Now, I haven't ridden them in the wet yet, and that could change the game, but Honda, as with all manufacturers, tends to go for a price point when they're putting their uh, rubber on the bikes. It's very rare to get a, a bike right off the showroom that has good shoes on it. They usually change the tires out pretty quickly.
with as good as this little cub handles, I bet I could take all these S's right here flat out. <laughs> 62, 63 miles an hour. Just leave it in wide open. A proper sports bike. Of course you can do that, but on these little bikes, I don't usually feel that level of confidence with them. A little too squirmy in the corners. blocking the traffic that's good I'd rather not come around the corner with a car coming head on at me nice and steady Good. set the cruise control and just let it go I'll still do a few more coast downs and take it easy on the motor but I don't think steady state's gonna hurt it now it's got enough miles on it it's not like this is a high stress motor anyway Kitty, yuck. A skunk over here somewhere. And there's blue bonnets and some of the orange ones. Need to look those up, figure out what the orange ones are. More of them over here. from two guys on Harleys, all right. The little Cub does have some street cred. <laughs>
got an ant in my collar. It's bitten me twice on the neck already. Might be a spider. Now that park is full of wildlife today. Spiders, biting flies, ants, mosquitoes, gnats. Woo! Out in force. Everything's hungry. Somebody coming up behind me. Yeah, it seems like... Ugh, that was rough. Uh, it seems like in the current configuration, uh, gearing, no windscreen, just my rider weight, whatever. The comfortable speed that the Cub kind of settles into is right around 45 uh, without excessive throttle or really straining and beating it up. Dude, I hope you're stopping. Jackass. 40 miles an hour up to a stop sign with a trailer. Maybe as it breaks in uh, and uh, you know, do a plus one on the front sprocket, cruising speed might be more like 50, which would be ideal for back highway stuff. I'm going to have to do my research and uh, figure out if I... One, if I really want to take this on the scooter cannonball, I think it would be pretty cool. And two, if uh, there are options for the uh, front re-gear and all that. I'm sure there are. It's just a sprocket change. The good thing about doing a plus one on a front is you usually don't have to change anything with your chain. Uh, your chain length is going to be the same. You just bump your rear wheel a tiny bit forward and you're good. Uh, sometimes if you drop two or three in the rear, your chain is too long and you end up out of adjustment space. You can't, uh, can't slide your rear wheel back far enough in the swing arm to take up the slack. In which case you've got to use a chain tool and punch out a link or two. But that's more of a permanent thing because putting them back in is not really an option. You could use additional master links to lengthen yourself again, but uh, if you want to undo your sprocket change, if it didn't work out for you or you just didn't like it, uh, you've modified the chain and then you're stuck. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Damn it, now i got to buy a new chain. I can move along. Somebody behind me and a big truck in front of me, so if I can find a clean spot, I'll just, you know, I'll just wave this guy by. Right now I'd rather go slow and preserve the gas and preserve the motor. this shoulder forever. I'm going to find something in here I don't like. Dude, if you're not going to go, come on, man, go. somebody go by like that. Still 
of two bars on the tank. Something else I'm noticing about this backpack, it's cutting off the circulation in my right arm, right shoulder. My hand's going to sleep real fast. I have a problem with uh, bilateral carpal tunnel uh, higher up in my shoulder. Uh, so it affects both arms and I've got to be able to uh, move my hands and my arms around to go to sleep. Go dude. he got on it. I thought he was going to pull out and just block the road. So if anyone else out there is watching uh, my Cub videos, my Cub rides, that is a Grom owner, uh, tell me how you do on your, uh, your long distance Grom rides if you do them. Uh, I've always thought about picking up a Grom or two for my son and I, Whoa. Uh, but I just wondered, I was concerned about their highway ability. You know, I've seen plenty of videos, people doing long distance rides and stuff on them. And it always seems like they're kind of limited to 55. And if you wring the neck, it'll get 60 or whatever. But uh, chime in with your comments below. Let me know what, uh, how you manage the long rides. Do you just you know, do pretty much like I am? Stay to the slow road, stay to the right, let people go by, or how do you manage it? Okay, good. Don't leave me sitting on the tracks. Ugh, my shoulders. Yeah, this pack is a little too heavy. Not. Well, I think the straps aren't wide enough to distribute the load on my shoulders, and it's cutting off the circulation. It's getting warm. Probably already in the mid 70s today. Maybe high 70s. Ooh, nobody's turning left. All right. in a habit of double canceling just to make sure that thing's really off. Oh, another uh, little product uh, that I wouldn't mind putting on here. I put on a lot of my bikes. Uh, if you listen to some of the audio on my uh, my vlogs with the SE6, with the Honda CB 500X and a couple of others, uh, little scooters, um, I have a turn signal alert on those from a group out of the UK. Um, I think I got them through uh, webike.net, somewhere like that. And uh, the product is called uh, SMIDZY, and it's an acronym for Sorry Mate, I Didn't See You. And uh, they're really neat little uh, turn signal reminders. They, they chirp. And uh, there's the option to silence the chirp with a brake lever if you're you know, sitting at a stop, you don't want to hear it chirping. Uh, but after they've chirped for a number of times, 20 times I think is the default limit, um, then it does a much louder trill to let you know that you've left your signal on. And if you touch the brakes, it resets the counter. 
uh, but they really work. Uh, you can hear them at highway speeds through your helmet, and except for, you know, 80 miles an hour, you're probably not going to hear it then, but you can't hear anything. Um, anyway, they, they're like 35 bucks, 40 bucks, and the, uh, the manufacturer has apparently stopped making them, or they, they stopped trading or something along those lines. I don't remember what the answer back was, but they're not available anymore. At least I can't find them. So if any of the uh, viewers out there are watching and you're from the UK, if you've uh, run into this product, let me know in the comments below. Uh, again, it's called the Smidzy, S-M-I-D-S-Y. Um, the particular model that I'm after is the TSR-3. Anyway, if they're available somewhere, I'd sure like to have them order five or ten of the dumb things. Still at two bars on the tank. It always, I mean, maybe it's just me, but it always seems to just settle right in at like 45, 47 range. Just, it's kind of comfortable there. Maybe after the windscreen, that'll change, add a little bit of uh, aerodynamics to it. I've also got a, an email notice uh, from Amazon saying that my mirrors had been delivered today, too. So when I get home, I'm going to drop all this stuff off, go refuel, grab the rack from the Honda dealer, and uh, put those mirrors on here. Take it around for a few more miles. A couple of jobs waiting on me that I can do remotely so I don't have to commute anywhere today. Now I'm down to one mark on the, on the uh, fuel. Pushing it harder. I'm going into the wind here too. For anybody that's watched my other vlogs, uh, the uh, trip to Coda a few weekends ago, this is the highway that I was trying to take to get west out toward Austin. When there was the closure on I-10, something happened. I don't know if it was an accident or what. But even this highway was full stop. And I can't remember exactly where the ugly started. It was right up here past this light. So that means this whole stretch all the way back about three or four miles was just solid. Stop traffic everywhere. Can't imagine how long that would have taken to get out of. I'm glad I was able to sidestep that and go the other way. Yeah, a lot of bikes out. It's great weather today. If I don't take the Cub back out later today, I'll definitely be taking one of the other bikes. Maybe the Riker or the CB500X. I can't remember what I've got at home right now. I rotate through them, keep the others at uh, my warehouses, or warehouse in the spare garage, but I don't know, uh, ooh, hey, red light. This guy's got no brake lights, none. That's a loud J break. I don't need to pass you, buddy. I'm no faster than you are. These other ones behind me might have something to say. I 
Alright, just gotta go. The road's over here, buddy. You drop that trailer off in the culvert and you're not gonna like it. Welcome to Fishtail City. He's even got a second set of brake lights up on top of his load, but <laughs> those aren't working either. And he seems to be real happy with that brake pedal too. is not even strapped down it's just sitting there oh, it's just dandy I've been following behind this putts for what three miles four miles now he's got the power cord wedged in there that's it oh yeah there's that's securing your load well now, none of this stuff is secured back here he's got loose fan parts, a motor of some kind. The heavy stuff's probably not going to come off the trailer, but... Ay, ay, ay. Man, that light's really short. This guy, I don't know what he's doing, but he is seriously messing up. I'm not behind him anymore, that's all I care about. I'm noticing a, like a knocking, almost like a dieseling sound uh, at low RPM while I'm in gear. I wonder what that is. Might be something with the clutch. I don't think I've heard it when I'm not in gear, but I have heard it when I'm sitting in gear, I'm decelerating real close to idle, or sitting still in idle, uh, or sitting still in gear, rather. Uh, I've noticed a kind of a, you know, a knocking, clicking sound. I don't know if that's a problem, it's just an observation. Yeah, it's definitely getting warm today. Even my uh, mesh jacket here, I'm starting to sweat. It was chilly last night, so we're we've got like a 40 degree temperature swing today. It was down in the low 40s out there, mid 40s. And then uh, we're on our way up to almost 80 today, I think. Maybe a little over. Are you really changing lanes or are you just thinking about it? You know, I don't want to be behind you. Not with that giant load of dirt and concrete, whatever that is you got there. Wide open throttle. Can he accelerate? Can he make the light? Yep, he's making the light. I want to stop and look before you blow that intersection. Ooh, this backpack and I are not liking each other. Yep, I just started getting the flashing blinky light. And at 86 miles about, so yeah, about the same place. I may be getting a little lower fuel economy on this run than I did uh, the previous in-town run, but that's to be expected. Higher speed, more wind resistance. There's Wild West. Good thing I'm turning. He was going to pull out in front of me anyway. Yeah, I can squeeze by. Look at that. That's one definite drawback about the Riker is uh, you can't squirt through traffic quite the same way. It's just too wide. Okay, somebody's unhappy. Yep, 87 miles, flashing bar, so still got 20-some, 
20 or 30 miles in there uh, if that's a quarter tank. I'm not going to push my luck until uh, I have a fuel bottle. Oh, back to the uh, scooter cannonball run thing. Um, either a spare tank, some fuel bottles, or maybe an auxiliary tank. Oh, that was a rough one. Uh, to shift, uh, to connect to the uh, main tank. Maybe through the gas lid or something like that. Just have a, some kind of a gravity fed or small fuel pump or something like that and put a uh, two gallon fuel cell on the rear parcel rack. That'd give this thing some serious range. Then you wouldn't have to stop for fuel too often. Your butt or your bladder would wear out before the tank would, I'm sure. I haven't figured out how to shift this thing at high RPM smoothly. Low RPM seems to work pretty well. Mm, gotta get some seat cushion or something for this guy. I'm sure there'll be a ton of aftermarket seat accessories and covers and pads and you name it. Hey, Grace. Howl for me. Come on. Good girl. <laughs> Keep reaching for a side stand. Dumb monkey never learns, I guess. <laughs>